to unwind, be inspired, and listen to the psychic insights of your host, Empowerment Psychic, Hallie Elise, a top 100 psychic, speaker, and author. Off air, be sure to connect with Hallie at HallieElise.com. And now, The Hallie Elise Show. Welcome, everyone. So glad that you could tune in this evening. You know the joke about the psychic who puts up a sign that says, Psychic Fair is canceled due to unforeseen circumstances? (laughs) I can't even say the joke right. I was thinking earlier today about how I needed to really make sure that I was finished with this project that I was involved with, and this way I could make it to the station on time and everything would be copacetic. Well, of course, great to know that beforehand. Really bad to forget to look at the clock. (laughs) Uh, My inner clock doesn't work so hot. It's really kind of interesting. But I will share something which I thought was kind of comical. I've noticed lately since I've been doing a lot of introspective work more so than usual, going into theta more often than theta. And, you know, there's those different levels of consciousness. You have alpha, which is that next step up from wake or waking mode, if you will. And then you have delta, then you have theta. And those are the most common. There is actually another deeper state. I've mentioned this a couple of times on there. The gist of it is, I've been working towards creating more equilibrium within the two hemispheres of the brain. I'm finding very interesting little subtle changes that are taking place. For instance, I've always been a lucid dreamer. Not that I lucid dream all the time. And for those of you who are going, what exactly is that? It's one of those things where you can be dreaming, and while you're dreaming, you're aware that you're dreaming. And as you're dreaming and aware of your dream, you decide you don't like what you're seeing, you change it. Or you decide not to dream and you get yourself up and that's it. What I'm finding, which is really peculiar, is I was dreaming the other night and for some reason there is my voice, but sounding almost outside of myself, telling me to get up in that moment. And I'm thinking in the dream, okay, this isn't making sense because this is not a part of the dream. (laughs) Wondering what's going on here. I almost felt as if there was a dual consciousness. And the interesting thing was I needed to get up to take care of something. Now, if you're thinking, oh, well, that's just normal. You wake up sometimes because of whatever reason. There's that subconscious message that you have. But this is where, and it's happened now several times, and I've been observing where I'm in the midst of doing something, and the voice, that natural inner voice, it's different, meaning it's still the same quality, tone, cadence, excuse me, cadence, but it's different in the sense of how it's delivered. And again, it's almost as if there's a duality. And no, I'm not getting a split personality, so please don't go there. It's more a matter of being able to see in more than one space at one time. And I know that, again, sounds a little funny, but think about it this way. If you do psychic work, you're always dipping in, tapping into higher realms, different realms, different consciousness. And that, to me, is normal. That's something that I've been doing for years and years and years. Add to that now a duality of not only recognizing those differences, different states, but having an outside voice of myself looking at things from a different perspective. Kind of unusual. That all being said, I have this awareness of things beforehand, and in our physical realm, though, I'm not always able to keep up with it. (laughs) And I just find it kind of amusing because you hear something, you have a sense about it, you know it, you recognize it, and you say to yourself, I'm paying attention to this. And you do, right? You recognize, like I said, and you do pay attention. And yet, for some reason, you're not always observing what you would consider the obvious. And yet, when it comes to, we'll say, walking into a space that is familiar and something that, I don't know, perhaps I I go to once a month or twice a month, 
I will notice the smallest little thing, such as there's a cup holder, for instance, on the right side, and they've moved it over three inches. Now, that sounds, again, kind of peculiar, but it's, again, that idea of creating more harmony within my own mind, within my own mental structure. It would be really fascinating to do a brain scan and see where my baseline is now versus where it might be later. Or it would have been great had I done it earlier, had I thought about it. (laughs) But I often hear about folks who have different experiences, especially after they've had an NDE, a near-death experience, where after they've returned from that, they do a brain scan and they recognize that there is a difference. Some areas are lit up more or more active. And I've also heard, now obviously this is just reading journals and sometimes experimenting with different sites to find out what sort of information is valuable, but I've, through that methodology, also heard that when you do psychic work, the synapses, those connectors to the brain, tend to be a little different. Kind of fascinating when you look at the science of it, not just the esoteric part. Because a lot of people were like, oh, cool, you do psychic work? Wow. And I do my best not to be rude. And not that there's an affront to anyone who does. Anybody who likes to constantly be in that airy space, that's great. If that's comfortable for them. For me, I feel it's just, except for when it comes to watching the clock, <laughs> I do my best to maintain a space back and forth, going from that esoteric realm into the physical space and being able to take care of all of those things. Something to think about. We are going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back with the Hallie Alicia. Thank you. your empowerment psychic, Hallie Elise, one of the top 100 psychics in America. For over 30 years, I have offered psychic readings, programs, spiritual guidance, and other life skill techniques. As our lives have become more complicated, we often reach for answers. Who are we? Where are we headed? Are we pointed in the right direction? In addition, we often are concerned for our loved ones. I have helped thousands of people navigate their life circumstances through different modalities of spiritual and intuitive guidance. Call me at 561-755-2166 and allow me to further explain how I may assist you in clearing the path of yesterday so today and tomorrow will be a success. Call me at 561-755-2166 or visit my site HallieElise.com. That's H A L L E Y E L I S E.com. You have been listening to Empowerment Psychic Hallie Elise, a top 100 psychic. She is your connection to all things spiritual, psychic, and empowering, your guide to peace and wisdom. For a private appointment off-air, call 561-755-2166. Now, back to the Hallie Elise Show with Empowerment Psychic, Hallie Elise. Welcome back. Nice to see everyone and to be able to talk again. I have to laugh because... I, some of you may know what was going on, <laughs> but I was on the phone getting to the station while I was talking on the air. And it's so much fun when technology works. I was kind of concerned that there would be some weird glitch. You wouldn't be able to hear or something would happen. And instead, yay, everything fell into place. If you'd like to call in this evening for a psychic reading, it's 888 565 
7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-
get something going on with him a little bit emotionally and nothing bad, nothing that he's not going to be able to handle, but I just feel like his head is not exactly where it needs to be as far as scholastically and, to, you know, as far as intellectually. And if you can have a little patience during this time, it'll make a, a huge difference. And I feel like he's going to be really successful. I know that's come up before where there's been some concern, what direction, what's happening. But I really feel like between now and second week of October, I'm going to just say be gentle or more more calm, more patient, I guess would be the best word to use here. Oh, it's very hard. I'm tough. I, I know you're a tough cookie and you're a great mom <laughs> because of it. But as best as you can, I'm going to say just kind of remember this because... I don't get him slacking off and that's what it's going to look like because it's more a matter of he's starting to learn how can he balance his social world and balance his education. And right now he's kind of focused on more of that social part of it. And if you can have a little bit of patience, he's going to kind of tweak it on his own. Okay. As far as you, I feel like after you're complete with your trip up north, I get West, but not West as in the U.S., West as in outside of the country. And really? Yes. Unfortunately, my oh. geography is not really great as far as that. You'd have to show me a map, but the feel here is West outside of the U.S. So, um, mm. Well, it's not Europe. Europe is East. Okay. What country? You're, you're going to laugh at me. The people are going to think, are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> but I just don't have a visual at this moment. What countries are directly west of us? That sounds like a very strange Anything question. Anything that's beyond uh, Hawaii, like Japan, Australia, everything in that side of the world. Okay, so Australia. What else is next to Australia besides New Japan? Finland. New Finland, did you say? I don't know. I don't know west that well either. Okay. Well, I'm going to say this. Take a look at the map <laughs> when we get off the phone <laughs> or the atlas. See, this is why I love books, because you could turn pages and go, oh, there it is. But it feels to me as if West, it doesn't feel specifically Australia, but for some reason, I'm going to say on that part of the world. And I feel like there's an invite, visit, what have you, but it is after your trip north. And... It may not be before the end of this year. It may be beginning of next year, but I feel like the invite comes in before the end of this year is over. You know, that's weird. You predicted something like that a long time ago. I mean, not a long, hmm. long time ago, but like when I had a full reading, like in July, I got to go look at my notes. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't like recall. You know, it kind of comes in and out, and, and, and I, I don't it, really yeah, remember. and I remember thinking, yeah, that's not going to happen. But I do that all the time, and then it happens, and I laugh. and I. Well, that's the fun part. You <laughs> go, nah, no way. Oh, there it is. <laughs> so that's well, kind I'm of excited. But major. there again, there's that pull towards that west part of our world. Keep that in mind. The other thing here is I feel like there's a little sensitivity, all right, base of throat, so... Let me see. If I went to that soft spot at the base of the throat, I went one, two, roughly about two inches down, get a little sensitivity mm -hmm. there. So I'm just going to say be aware of the space that is a couple of inches below the soft spot of, of the neck, of the throat. Okay. And I'm going to say if there's discomfort, if it just feels funny, go have it checked. Okie dokie. Okay. Okay. And the only other thing here that I get is some changes coming up with your pooch. I know he's been doing this dance on, off, on, off, on, off. And he's just, he's like that energizer bunny. He keeps on going <laughs> and he's adorable. I but I, I get some little changes starting to take place. I'm going to say before the end of this month. And I feel like the rest of this year is going to be a bit interesting with him. I, you know, it's funny because the other day I was looking at him and I, I really think he's got doggy dementia. <laughs> like, now he reacts different to certain things in a weird way. Yes. Uh, it might be that. It oh, may thank very you so well much, be. Ellie, and happy Labor Day. I'm sorry thank you had you. to work, but I'm glad I got my mini reading. <laughs> You're very welcome. <laughs> Have a great Take night. Care. Thanks for you calling. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. If you'd like to call in for a reading, call 565 Nope, 888, sorry, I jumped ahead there, 888-565-1470. See, I get into that altered space, and it's really funny because it seems as if I'm just talking, right? And I am, but I'm not. And I was saying earlier today about having that duality and going back and forth, but we all do that at some times. Think about it when 
you get engrossed in something and you're so busy that all you see is that thing that you're doing or experiencing in that moment and somebody could talk to you and you could actually communicate with them and have no recollection of communicating. Now, if you're married, (laughs) I would say both men and women can agree to this. When you're in a married relationship, there are moments where you talk to your mate and they're like, "Uh uh-huh, okay, honey, sure. And then later you go, hey, what happened to, or when are we going to? And they go, what are you talking about? (laughs) And you say, but you said yes, or we discussed it. And the other person has no clue. And it's not because they are trying to be disrespectful. It's not because they're not paying attention. It's more a matter of they are more focused in that other realm of their mind, that other realm of their consciousness in that moment. I'm going to suggest that when you see your loved one, and this applies to children too, not just adults, but if you see your loved one doing something, but you have something important to discuss with them, if you share it with them in that moment, give yourself a reminder to share it with them when they're finished with whatever it is they're focused on. Because most of the time, they're not going to remember the depth and breadth of what you were talking about. And if it's important to you, you can keep on top of it simply by saying, hey, Do you remember our conversation while you were doing this? And they can say, well, yeah, I know next Wednesday we're doing something. And you could go, yeah, that's when my surgery is. (laughs) You know, it could be something big. My point is, if it's important, truly, just bring it up again. And you'll notice that it cements the information. Whereas if you just left it and that day came along or that incident came along, that they may not connect to it in the way that you want them to. It's so funny how our brains work, and I'm always fascinated by mental science. And I say mental versus psychological because there's a difference as far as how we process. And I've been reconnecting with neuroplasticity, I think I mentioned a few weeks ago, and how that works and finding out about, we'll say, different realms of our awareness and consciousness. And what I think is so amazing is part of it is who we are and how we think and how we perceive our world. And if we shift that, then everything shifts. Part of it, though, is that physiological aspect. So, for instance, if you are getting up there in age and you're thinking, oh, you're you're not remembering where you put your keys or something that you knew the name of, it was there and then it just wasn't. It's not necessarily that you're having a problem. It could simply be a lack of proper nutrition. I don't know how many people that I've run into over the years would say, oh, well, this is going on or that's going on or I don't feel good. And what would come up is they're just not getting the right type of nutrition to keep hormones balanced, to keep the thyroid healthy, to keep your nervous system and your parasympathetic system and your endocrine system and all these things healthy. And I'll be very candid. I have no knowledge of that in what I would call the concrete world. When I go into that intuitive space, a lot of times information comes through and I can tell that person, here, pay attention to this, go see your doctor, ask them about that. I would never take on that role of telling somebody that I know that they have to do this with the exception of, on occasion I have said to somebody, go to the doctor now because it was that important that they needed to do that. Keep in mind, you have the same ability I do. The only difference is I practice with mine every single day and I meditate every day and I do breath work and all the things that I share with you and I say, please do. I do that because I do it also. I'm not asking you to do anything I don't. And I'm not suggesting that everybody listening all of a sudden takes on that, you know, quote unquote, psychic role. It's not necessary. What is necessary is if you listen to your inner guidance you will find that your life becomes easier. For instance, you are debating over two jobs. They are great with their benefits. They are equally good as far as surroundings, location, convenience to work, what have you. What's going to make the difference? Especially, let's say, if it's a job that you would like to do. The difference is, what are you feeling inside? What are you understanding about the job itself. How do you feel when you think about it? So if it's job A and job B and you're undecided based on all the things that they both have that are equal, then ask yourself, which one is going to make me happier? And listen to that. Don't second guess because you have that wherewithal within to pay attention, to know. Everybody always talks about mother's instinct 
or gut feelings or I just knew that. And it doesn't happen much, but I just knew that. And the truth of the matter is that everybody has a capacity to pay attention to that inner guidance. It's there. It's just getting accustomed to doing it, making it a habit. Think about it like this. When you go to sleep, you sleep a certain way, whether it's with the blanket on or the blanket off, and that's your habit. That's your pattern. If all of a sudden you didn't have a blanket and you were used to sleeping with the blanket on, it would be uncomfortable for a period of time till you got used to it. Or if you were used to not sleeping with a blanket and you were forced to sleep with the bank blanket, again, it would be something you'd have to get used to. Listening to that intuitive guidance, paying attention to that psychic knowing is something to get used to. That's all. To create that lovely pattern for yourself. And that way, when you meet somebody who appears to be absolutely lovely, if you hear that little voice in your head that says run, pay attention to that. If you're going into a restaurant and it's beautiful by all accounts, but you walk in and something doesn't feel right, pay attention to that. If within you hear a call, Aunt Sarah, again, pay attention. I'm leaving you this evening with one thought, and that is you have the capability to really make your life become more enriched by simply listening within. I thank you and I wish you a wonderful evening. Hope you've had a great Labor Day. Tune in next week for the Hallie Ailey Show. Thank you. Remember to tune in every Tuesday on WNN at 9 p.m. for more peace, inspiration, and psychic phenomena with empowerment psychic Hallie Elise, Top 100 Psychic. The opinions expressed on the preceding sponsored program were strictly those of its hosts, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of the state.